Jakarta, Indonesia. Jakarta is the fastest sinking major city on Earth. In the northern districts, the ground is dropping by nearly 5 centimeters every year. That may not sound like much, but over a decade it adds up to half a meter. Some studies show up to 20 centimeters per year in the worst spots, though that's more extreme zones. Already, 40% of the city sits below sea level, and by 2050, a third of Jakarta could be permanently underwater. The reason is simple. Water extraction. Only about 60% of households are connected to reliable piped water. Everyone else drills private wells. When you keep pulling groundwater from clay layers, the soil compresses, just like a sponge shrinks when you squeeze it dry. Geography makes it worse. Jakarta lies on a swampy delta where 13 rivers meet the Java Sea. The rivers bring floods every rainy season, and rising seas push tides higher each year. In 2007, one flood covered 70% of the city, killed more than 80 people, and caused close to $900 million in damage. The government tried seawalls, including a 32-kilometer barrier nicknamed the Giant Seawall. But if the land underneath keeps collapsing, no wall can hold the ocean back. So, Indonesia took the drastic step of building a new capital. In 2019, President Joko Widodo announced Nusantara, a $32 billion project on Borneo. Jakarta won't disappear soon. It's home to more than 30 million people in the metro area. But as a political capital, its days are numbered. Mexico City, Mexico. Mexico City is sinking almost as fast, but for different reasons. The entire city sits on the dried bed of Lake Texcoco, where the ground is nothing but soft clay. That clay is compressible, and when you pump out groundwater, it collapses. Some districts are dropping 20 to 50 centimeters a year. That's more than any city besides Jakarta. Over the last century, Mexico City has sunk more than 10 meters in total. Imagine a three-story building disappearing into the ground. That's how far the city has dropped. The problem is worse because the sinking is uneven. Over volcanic rock, neighborhoods stay stable. Over clay, entire districts tilt. The result is cracked roads, warped pipelines, and damaged infrastructure. Even the Metropolitan Cathedral, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, leans because its foundations keep shifting. The Mexico City Metro, which carries over 4 million passengers daily, is also at risk. Tracks bend and tunnels warp because different parts of the system are sinking at different speeds. Satellite studies confirm what engineers already know. This is not reversible. Once the clay compacts, it doesn't bounce back. Venice, Italy. Venice is the world's most famous sinking city. It's been dropping by about 1 to 2 millimeters a year, which sounds small, until you add 2 to 3 millimeters of sea level rise every year on top of it. That's why flooding events are now routine. The aqua alta, or high tide floods, used to be rare. Now they happen dozens of times each year. In November 2019, the tide reached 1.94 meters above average, the second highest ever recorded. 85% of the city was underwater, with damages approaching $1 billion. Venice fought back with the Mose Project, a $6 billion system of 78 floodgates installed at Lagoon Inlets. The gates can rise to block incoming tides, and since 2020, they've been deployed during extreme flood events. They've worked. St. Mark's Square, which used to flood multiple times each winter, now stays dry when the gates are raised. But Mose is only a defense. The city still sinks, the seas keep rising, and long-term projections suggest that by 2100, the lagoon may overwhelm the system anyway. Shanghai, China Shanghai has risen into one of the tallest skylines in the world, and at the same time, the ground beneath it has dropped by over 3 meters in the last century. The problem is twofold. First, groundwater extraction fueled industry and growth. Second, the city sits on soft alluvial clay, which compresses under the sheer weight of thousands of high-rises. At one point, the land was sinking by nearly 10 centimeters per year. The government stepped in. Strict regulations reduced groundwater pumping, shifting the supply toward the Yangtze River. As a result, sinking slowed to under 1 centimeter a year in most areas. That's progress, but it doesn't erase the risk. Shanghai lies only a few meters above sea level. With 26 million residents, even small drops increase the threat of coastal flooding. Bangkok, Thailand Bangkok is one of the fastest sinking cities in Southeast Asia. On average, it sinks about 1 to 2 centimeters per year. That may sound small compared to Jakarta or Mexico City, but over decades it adds up. And combined with rising sea levels, it's a serious threat. 
The city was built on a swampy floodplain of the Chow Phraya River, where soft clay layers compress easily. For decades, Bangkok relied heavily on groundwater pumping, which accelerated the sinking. Even after restrictions were introduced in the 1970s, the land continues to settle under the weight of more than 10 million residents and expanding infrastructure. Today, much of Bangkok sits less than 1.5 meters above sea level. The World Bank has warned that large areas of the city could be underwater by 2050, especially during extreme weather events. Flooding is already routine. In 2011, a massive flood killed more than 800 people nationwide and caused $45 billion in damages, with Bangkok at the center of the disaster. Officials have built flood barriers and drainage systems, but like Jakarta and Venice, these measures only slow the problem. With urbanization increasing and climate change pushing seas higher, Bangkok's long-term future is uncertain. New Orleans, USA New Orleans is a city built below sea level, and it's sinking deeper every year. On average, the city subsides by 6 millimeters annually, though some neighborhoods are dropping by 2 to 5 centimeters per year. The main reason is its location on the Mississippi River Delta. Over centuries, natural sediment deposits built up the land, but levees constructed to prevent flooding also stopped the river from replenishing those sediments. Without fresh deposits, the delta soils compact and the city sinks. On top of that, oil and gas extraction in the region accelerates subsidence by draining underground layers. Add in sea level rise, and New Orleans faces a triple threat, sinking land, rising water, and stronger hurricanes. The consequences were on full display during Hurricane Katrina in 2005, when levees failed and 80% of the city flooded. Over 1,800 people died, and damages reached $125 billion. Katrina wasn't just a storm disaster. It was a sinking city colliding with extreme weather. Billions have since been spent on new levees, pumps, and flood walls. But experts warn that if subsidence and sea level rise continue, New Orleans will remain one of the most vulnerable cities in the United States. Houston, USA Houston is one of America's fastest-growing cities, but parts of it have sunk by nearly 10 feet, 3 meters, over the past century. The main culprit is groundwater pumping. As Houston's population boomed, the demand for water drained underground aquifers, causing the land to collapse. Oil and gas extraction around the Houston region added to the problem, further destabilizing the ground. By the 1970s, some areas were sinking so fast that entire neighborhoods became flood-prone. The clearest example is Baytown, east of Houston. Once a thriving community, large sections of it had to be abandoned because the land dropped several feet, leaving homes permanently flooded. Even today, Houston remains vulnerable. The city already sits in the path of hurricanes, and subsidence makes flooding worse. During Hurricane Harvey in 2017, nearly a third of the metro area was underwater, causing billions in damage, partly because sinking land had lowered natural flood defenses. Regulations on groundwater pumping have slowed the subsidence in some districts, but with Houston's population pushing past 7 million in its metro area, the pressure on water and land isn't going away. Dhaka, Bangladesh Dhaka is one of the most vulnerable sinking cities in the world. Home to over 20 million people, the city is dropping by 2 to 5 centimeters every year, according to studies by the Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. The causes are familiar. Intensive groundwater extraction for drinking water and industry, plus the natural compaction of soft delta soils. Dhaka sits on the floodplains of the Ganges Brahmaputra Delta, which makes the ground highly unstable. Unlike cities such as Shanghai, where regulations slowed subsidence, Dhaka's growth has been too fast and too unregulated. The city's water demand is enormous. About 80% of its supply comes from underground aquifers, and those aquifers are being depleted at unsustainable rates. The problem is amplified by climate change. Rising sea levels in the Bay of Bengal, combined with stronger monsoons, make flooding more frequent and destructive. In 2020, severe floods submerged more than a quarter of Bangladesh, with Dhaka among the hardest-hit regions. Experts warn that without drastic action, Dhaka could face unlivable conditions within decades, with millions forced to migrate. And that's all for today's episode. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.